Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you just a little bit about a trip we took um, a week or so ago to the Tennessee Aquarium to shoot some butterflies. So I went with Phil Thatch, uh, who is an excellent bird and wildlife photographer that I am trying to learn a lot from. And I also went with Ron Durant, um, who is also an excellent bird photographer, wildlife photographer. Uh, and I have gone with him a couple of times now to pick his brain about waterfall photography. So these two guys went to do some really serious photography and I just kind of tagged along because I wanted to try out the Canon R6 Mark II with the 70 to 200 lens on it, shooting mostly at 200 millimeter, um, handheld, trying to shoot butterflies, to, rather than trying to take a macro lens and get close, because sometimes you can't get close. When you're shooting butterflies, uh, especially in the Tennessee Aquarium, sometimes they're 10, 15 feet away, a, a macro lens is not gonna do you any good. So what you have to do is shoot and then edit massively. So, and I wanna to talk to you about that today. I wanna to show you an example of what I'm talking about. So if you've never been to the Tennessee Aquarium, then you've missed out because it is a wonderful, wonderful place to go. There are two buildings there. There's a freshwater building and a saltwater building. And it's in the, in the saltwater building where the butterfly collection is. Um, and so when you walk in and you take the escalator all the way up to the very, very top of the building, there's uh, some lemurs up there and tortoises and other things and then some stingrays that you can pet. Um, and then it leads into the butterfly garden. And so while we were going around there, and I'll just kind of throw some pictures up as I'm talking, but there are some really, really beautiful flowers there that um, I just thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, taking pictures of and trying to come up with some kind of edit that made them look as nice as they did in person. Uh, and then you go through a couple of doors to get into the butterfly garden and it's like walking into a sauna. So <clears throat> it takes about 10 minutes or so for your camera to adjust. Um, there's fost or fog all over your uh, mist all over your lens. Uh, you got to keep wiping it off as you're going along, and as soon as you get it wiped off and you hold it up to your head or up to your eye, you'll just be looking through fog again. So it takes a little while for the camera to get acclimated. Uh, and then th the, the difficult part <laughs> is being there at a time when the butterflies are fairly calm. Because if they're flitting around and they're not being still and they're not landing anywhere, it's hard. And there are a few, like this one right here, that uh, we, we tried forever to get this picture of, of these blue butterflies. Because as soon as they land, they just fold their wings straight up. And so you have to catch them at just the right point. And all, we were almost ready to leave, and I walked over and I saw one with its wings out, and it was just sitting there on a leaf. Uh, and so uh, we got a few pictures there as well. But what I want to do, I'll show you some more pictures at the end of the video, but right now what I want to do is I want to take you through the process of editing um, to show you sort of how the sausage is made, for me at least. Um, and, uh, and, and so let, let's just get started with that now. Okay, so I started with this image right here, and this is the, this is the final image. And I exported this image and I, I posted it a couple of places on social media and I thought I was happy with it. And the longer that I looked at it, the more I realized I just didn't crop it enough. And I don't know if uh, I, it, I don't know if I can crop it enough. You'll see up here, uh, this image was shot at F8 at ISO 100 and it was at one two hundredth of a second. So my noise level should be kind of low, um, and you know the lighting is what the lighting is. So I want to show you this picture. This is the picture I actually took, and so 
I'm not going to try to edit exactly like I did before, but because I want to try to crop in a little closer and see if I can get this image a little more interesting. But one of the things that I do uh, to start with is when I'm, when I'm working with something like this, where I've got a lot of pictures that are exactly the same as far as composition, lighting, those kinds of things, I will probably use a preset. And in this case, I have uh, this angelic high key preset that I used for almost all of the images. Now, the thing you have to remember about a preset is that it is only a starting point. It, it just sort of gives you a lot of adjustments all at once that you then need to manipulate to get what you want. So this is, <clears throat> this is, I'm going to click that. You'll see automatically over here on the right, the highlights have been drawn down. The, the shadows are brought way up. The, there's been some added uh, exposure here, a little contrast, a lot of clarity, <clears throat> some more vibrance. Uh, a little bit of saturation, but what I have found with presets is that they don't always fit every picture. And so what I do immediately is I come over here, I hold the shift key down and I let Lightroom tell me, tell me what is the right setting for this particular image. So if I double click on highlights, it will change that just a little. And if I double click on shadows, it will pull that down just a little and I double click on whites and it brightens it just a little and I double click on blacks. Now for me, you'll notice that the picture kind of got a little dull <clears throat> because for me, I like to override Lightroom and bring just a little black back into my pictures. So that's pretty much that. Now, the next thing that I will do is I will do some sharpening. I'll crank it up a lot. I'll hold the option key down and you can see here exactly what's going to be sharpened. And I want to try to get it down as much to the subject as I can. And then I will usually set effects here. I'll put a vignette on it of minus 10. I don't usually ever go below 11 or 13. We'll do 11 today just for the heck of it. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to crop this image. And, and a lot of my images now I'm cropping to 16 by nine because when I show them in my video, it fills the screen. I don't always take that into consideration, but here I did. And you'll see here in this last picture, um, that was finished. Well, that's not what I want. Let me go back. Let me, let me close that. When you go back over here to this image, you'll see that I placed it in the middle, but sort of on the bottom third. And so I want to keep that over here. So when I go back to do the 16 by nine, I am going to crop this image in quite a bit. And then I'm going to place it on that lower third, sort of in the middle. Click done. Now you can see between the two, I'm a lot closer to my subject here, which is kind of what I wanted. In fact, I could get just a little more. So you, uh, you can see immediately how much of this image has been cropped away to get what I want. Not everything that you see on a finished product <laughs> is what you had to start with. So the thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to select the background and Lightroom does a great job of figuring out what the subject is, except here it selected the entire image. So that's not going to work for me. Uh, so let's do, let's delete that. Let's see if it will select the subject. I bet it won't. But we'll see if it will. And no. So what I'm going to do instead is I am going to use a radiant filter. It's probably what I used the first time. I don't really remember. And I'm just going to kind of make this the shape of the butterfly sort of along there. And then I'm going to invert this. 
so that I'm adjusting the background. I want to make the background a little darker so that the subject pops more. So now it stands out against the background pretty good. So I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to take a lot of time with this. I'm just kind of making some adjustments as I go. The other thing I've got here is this bottom right corner and this little piece of color over here is just a little bit too much. So I'm going to take a linear gradient tool and I'm going to come up here just a little bit and I'm going to bring that exposure down just a tad as well just to kind of make that less noticeable. And then I will do one last final step here and that is to take this photo into Photoshop just because I've cropped in so much and I've lost a little detail <coughs> I'm going to put it over here in Photoshop and do some extra sharpening on it so there's my image I'm going to come up here to topaz sharpen I don't do this I don't do this with all of my images but especially ones that have a little bit of noise or something I can usually get rid of them um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to say that it's, uh, well, I'm going to leave it as, I've got it set on too soft and very noisy, and that should eliminate a few things. You'll notice down here, if you look at the bottom leaves, it's already sort of made some differences. If you look at the eyes on the butterfly, it's already made some differences. So I'm going to apply that and then save it. And it saves it as a new image. So this is the edited TIFF image. Now, this is the image that I edited first. And you can see that the butterfly just kind of got lost in the background. That's why I wanted to go back and redo this image. It's still too small. And so by bringing it in really close, I get a much better look at the butterfly. And so this is where I took all of my edits. Uh, some of them are cropped in really, really tight. But the sensor on this camera is great at keeping detail. And so I've been very, very happy using the Canon R6 Mark II. And I'm still learning how to use the, 100, the 70 to 200 lens. I think within the camera body, I had the, I had the wrong autofocus setting for this particular type of photography. I'm not going to go into all that right now. And I, I think I lucked out, basically, is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, because if I were to go back to the butterfly uh, spot at the Tennessee Aquarium, I would change what I did with my autofocus. And I think that I would have uh, a lot more images that I wound up liking. So anyway, I'm going to end up by putting some other pictures up here on the, uh, on the screen, let some music play out. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit the like button. Leave me a comment to tell me how great this was uh, or if you have questions. Um, and uh, we will see you next time.